It's my privilege today to talk to you about a project that Infobox has been working on for quite some time now called Lookalike Domains. My name is Drew McFarlane. I'm a product manager here at Infobox, and right now couldn't be a better time for us to be announcing this wonderfully powerful new technology. If you've been paying at all attention to the news lately, you'll see that lookalikes have actually started to become recognized as being the threat that they actually are. This was a headline from earlier on this year about a Chinese hacker group that was discovered, and they'd pre-purchased about 42,000 different lookalike domains for the purpose of la launching this massive phishing campaign. This is just one group in one campaign. This stuff is done all the time because the attackers have recognized that if they can fool users into believing that they're interacting with a trusted source, there's a higher likelihood that they're going to engage, they're going to give up their passwords, etc. So in order to understand exactly how this works, let's start by looking at what they call the attack kill chain or the cyber kill chain. This was a model that was created earlier on by a company called MITRE. And basically the idea here is when a campaign launches, it's not just one attack, it's actually a series of events that roll out. So the earliest stage that you would think is you get that email, that phishing email that looks like it's coming from somebody. And if you happen to click on that, maybe it's gonna download some malware or some ransomware. And if that actually gets launched on your PC and your PC ends up getting infected, now that infected device is gonna start looking to see if there are other devices that it can reach out to. It's gonna to try to communicate back with the mothership to try to see if they can get some additional instructions. And then finally, it may actually start trying to find data that's important to you and exfiltrate it. Now, the important thing about this entire chain is it really comes in a couple of different sections. You know, there is what I call the regret zone, which is everything that follows the point where you've actually got infected. From that point forward, you can block that command and control, you can block the data exfiltration, but you still have somebody in your environment who's actively compromised and you're fighting against time to try to get that remediated. Everything prior to that is the prevention zone. You're stopping that phishing email from coming. You're stopping the user from potentially being able to even click on the phishing link. So you can block those things and it's great if, if you block those, you've done your job, have a nice day. If anything in the regret zone, you still have work to do. But wouldn't it be nice to go right back to the earliest, which is the what they call the reconnaissance and planning stage, where I'm calling this the pre-crime zone. And basically, this is where lookalike domains actually play. You're not blocking the active campaign. You're identifying the campaign before they even launch it, when they're still planning it out, when they're still trying to figure out how are they going to end up uh, fooling you into interacting with them. So that's the power of the lookalike domain is when you, you keep on hearing today uh, this concept called shift left, this is about as left as you can get. If you can get to the point where you can stop a campaign while it's still in the planning zone, you are so far ahead. So what are lookalike domains? And they really fall into a couple of different types of categories. There's a traditional, and that would be if you prepend or append words to a trusted domain. So the example I gave you here is actually one that has actually happened to us. Somebody tried to purchase Infobox benefits with the presumed idea of trying to interact with our employees to make them think that maybe they're interacting with Infobox. Another option is what they call the homograph or homoglyph. And there, you may, if you don't look too careful, they may fool you into believing that you're dealing with the actual domain. So the example I've given you here is google.com. And maybe instead of O's, they've replaced those with zeros, or instead of an L for Google, you know, like they've replaced that with a one. So in these circumstances, you know, it can actually look just like the domain that you're supposed to be using. Maybe they've replaced thing, things with acrylic alphabet or, or something like that. It looks right, but it isn't. It's actually taking you to someplace else. And then finally, you have a category that we call typo squats. And this is not so much trying to fool you visually, but to try to take advantage of the fact that there's some common misspellings out there. So maybe you know, you're trying to type Facebook and your finger slips and instead of hitting the K, you've hit the key right next to it, which is a J. And now you even thought that you were going there and it looks right. You were going where you thought that you were going. 
but they're going to be able to, to take advantage of that. So each one of these is a different technique that they will use to try and fool you into believing that you're interacting with a trusted environment. So this is what's kind of important about uh, lookalike domains is lookalike domains end up being in this cross section between traditional cybersecurity and social engineering. It's not just a, an exploit. The exploit is you. The exploit is trying to fool you into believing that you are interacting with something, maybe because the, the name looks correct or everything else seems to fall into, into category. They are trying to social engineer you. So that makes detecting these things kind of tricky. And that's what we've been trying to work on. So I'm gonna pause here and go into a demonstration to show you exactly how this would end up working. So here we actually have lookalike domains set up and you see there's a, a number of different companies that we've established already that we're saying, look for you know, Baidu, look for Amazon, look for Apple. And, uh, and there it's gonna end up you know, telling you about the different, you know, like in, in the case of Apple, We've got about 262 different lookalikes that are not only lookalikes, but they're lookalikes that we've identified as potentially being bad. I can expand this thing out and you can go through here and try to see what some of those things are. I'm actually going to jump into a different view here and I can set up different filters. So the filter I can say, you yeah, filter not only on, on these lookalikes, but show me the phishing, the malware and the suspicious lookalikes that are out there that are trying to imitate bmw.com. So here you've got a number of different things, you know, like you've got bmw525.top. Now, 525 is a model of bmw, so maybe they were trying to make people think that there was actually a, uh, a website that was specifically uh, geared toward that. Now, if you're at all wondering why, this, why we're flagging this thing as being bad or suspicious, you can actually click through on this and it's going to take you to a part of our product called Dossier. And Dossier is going to give you all of the information that we have about that domain to try to give you some sort of a sense as to why it's bad, down to and including you know, the research notes that are done by our internal researchers to try to say, this is, this is what we were able to find here. And the nice thing is, is because this thing was bad, because we detected this thing that was, uh, that was potentially uh, malicious, this also goes into a threat feed. So the moment that we discover it, we can actually start blocking it as well. So that's the important part of this. Now, you know, back to where I had been, we obviously look for all of the most common websites out there, the websites that people traditionally try to attack. And there are a, a number here of different domains that, that we you, know, you can either turn on or turn off. But again, the, the important thing here is if we find anything that's potentially suspicious with any of these, we're gonna go ahead and, and block those for you so you don't even have to worry about it. Now, the important thing is that we also give you the capability of going in and adding your own domain because we're obviously gonna be looking for all the most common uh, domains that are out there, but maybe your domain isn't that common. So you want to plug the, you know, maybe the name of, uh, of your organization in there, maybe the names of some of your partners, and now we're going to be looking for those domains as well, because you know we're you know with as much as we would love to be able to scour the entire internet and try to figure out uh, if anything is trying to be a look like of anything else, that's just not really uh, feasible. But what we can do is we can protect your organization and the you know protect uh, your brand and your reputation as well. So that's the idea here: is that this actually gives you the capability of going in, adding your, your domain, and influencing what threat intelligence we end up coming up with. You actually help us um, you know, make the threat intelligence more relevant to you, to your partners, to your customers, uh, to anybody that's involved with your brand. Now, jumping back to the slide deck, something that I started talking about was what we call suspicious domains. Now, there are a couple of different categories that we have. So obviously everybody knows what a malicious domain is. A malicious domain is anything that we know is, is definitely an attack. In conjunction with lookalikes, we've come up with this new concept called suspicious. And suspicious means it has all these different characteristics that it shares with other domains that we know are potentially bad. But 
We don't know how it's bad yet. Maybe it's going to end up growing up to be a phishing site or a malware download or command and control. We just know that it's, it seems to be owned by a bad actor and that it's probably up to no good. And the fact that it's a lookalike is just more proof to that aspect. So it's basically sharing a lot of DNA with this, where again, we're able to identify potentially threatening domains before they even resolve to anything, you know, right back at that earlier stage. So remember, we were talking about the pre-crime zone. We're allowing you to detect this stuff and block it often before the campaign started, even before the website is hosted on anything. We know that that domain is going to end up being used for something pretty malicious. Now, in summary, lookalikes are, are often used by the threat actors out there to try to make their cyber attacks more successful. If you think that you're actually interacting with Google or name the vendor that you think that you would end up trusting, you're more likely to give up information than you would if you were dealing with somebody that you didn't know or didn't trust. Blocking suspicious lookalike domains prevent phishing attacks, prevent some of these other attacks before they're even launched. And nothing gives me a warmer feeling than to know that you we've actually blocked stuff that the uh, that the threat actors are still actively working on. They don't realize that the gig is up for them already. And we've the moment that they launch their stuff, we've already blocked them. Protecting your domains within this helps do a couple of things. Number one, obviously it protects your domain. So like we were looking for that infobox hyphen benefits. We protect your organization from potentially getting targeted. We protect your customers and your partners from being able to do that. We protect your brand because if somebody thinks that they're interacting with your brand and they end up getting attacked, even though logically you know that it wasn't your fault, it was something else altogether, they're still going to relate that event to you. So if we can come up with this threat intelligence uh, and, and send this thing out uh, and allow people to block this early on, you know, we are protecting your brand all the way through. And I'm not even aware of any other circumstance where a customer can actually help, you know, a, um, a threat researcher like us uh, identify and influence exactly what type of threat in, uh, threat intelligence to, to actually look for than, than this. This is a unique opportunity to try and get threat intelligence that is hyper relevant to your organization and your organization alone. If you want to learn anything more about any of the topics I've talked about, we've got a couple of different QR codes here. One is a blog about phishing for a multi-factor authentication and another blog about phishing lookalikes and fake support calls. So thank you very much. And we look forward to talking to you. 